This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha. Welcome this Friday to Pioneer Plaza Think Tech why uh, this is Mike Elliott filling in for uh, Ted Ralston of where the drone leads just wanted to Ted's out on another assignment uh, doing a lot of great stuff here for the state of Hawaii and uh, if some of you don't know uh, Ted is probably one of the hardest working people uh, I know that I've met that has the betterment of this state uh, deep in his heart and he is continually working uh, with regard to uh, drone technology and how that can actually uh, do a lot of great things here in the state of Hawaii. So uh, thanks again, Ted, for all your hard work. Thanks for letting me host. Um, like I said, my name is Mike Elliott. Uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about Interdrone 2017. So we had, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, in uh, Las Vegas, uh, yeah, what happens there stays there, except I'm gonna talk to you about Interdrone. So uh, Interdrone is an international drone conference, and what it's turned out to be is a bit of uh, technology with the aspect of the drones themselves, the sensors and systems, payloads, and then also uh, a variety of track courses that they've offered uh, over the past couple years in uh, specialty particular areas of fire rescue, cinematography, mining and aggregates, uh, map mapping, uh, and there are also a number of people there from different agencies from the FAA and others that you can talk with directly. And uh, the uh, keynote speaker on the opening was the uh, FAA administrator himself. And uh, one of the things that was very key in his discussion, uh, drones are here to stay. He understands that. He understands that he has a mountain of uh, effort to work through because the technology that is behind what's driving the UAS industry is uh, moving at a pace faster than regulators can handle. And that's something that is a bit of a challenge, but he has asked us to continue to press on. And what he's seeing too is that uh, issues being addressed of uh, safety, uh, redundancy, and uh, you know the hard work by a number of people that have been uh, Part 107 qualified for just over a year now is beginning to prove to people that this is a, uh, a safe industry for commercial operations and that uh, it's actually doing a lot of good. There were a number of great lectures uh, given by folks that uh, summarized some of the work that they have been doing over the past couple years and then sharing that with a number of other people there too. So I wanted to start with a few videos of uh, just some of the items that were there. Uh, there are too many to name, but if you go to innerdrone.com, you can actually look at all the vendors that were there, and there'll be an Innerdrone 2017 summary video, I think, up on YouTube here pretty soon from uh, Innerdrone themselves. So if you want to go ahead and uh, cue the first video, and uh, we'll just talk a little bit over that. So ProDrone, this particular company is actually from Japan. And some of you might recognize this particular drone with its grappling arms. You might have saw it on uh, Facebook or something and thought, yeah, that's not real. Well, it is. Um, the founding of this company was out of the heartbreak of the tsunami uh, in Japan a few years ago, an earthquake. And how do we rescue people and how do we get things to people when they're in most, most in need? And they're even actually working on a, a drone that is a... Uh, personal rescue drone basically you would uh, in case of a tsunami you would go up to this drone you would uh, climb in you kind of strap in on the side you fire this thing up and it would lift and carry you away from the scene of the incident and uh, you know that type of tragedy sometimes drives uh, technology or ideas for technology so pro drone one of the uh, companies that was there that was it's very impressive uh, made in Japan and uh, very Im impressive type of uh, technologies that they were using with regard to this and then some other drones that they're also uh, manufacturing and looking to bring to market here in the very near future. So we're going to up, up and away, release. So yeah, multi-axis arms and stuff. So it can basically operate and manipulate very similar to you know, the human hand and human arm. Uh, another example, just being able to carry, you know, a float out to somebody as a, acting as an instant lifeguard. 
But uh, one of the biggest things, like I said, for them was being able to carry stuff to another uh, uh, people that were in distress. So, you know, the type of technology that you're seeing mature is also working on issues of uh, redundancy and safety. Uh, one of the hot items that was there this year, too, were some issues with dealing with parachutes. Uh, previously, some of the parachute systems you had seen on the market were, um, I guess, not of the uh, greatest quality. And there were issues of how these things were going to work and not get caught up in rotors and stuff like that. Well, there are companies like ParaZero and a few others that are actually addressing this with very smart systems that operate completely independent of the drone itself and determine when there's loss of power or that there's an unstable attitude uh, that, is, that the drone is actually taking and can instantly deploy a parachute and bring a drone back safely to the ground. So a couple things, if you're uh, applying for a waiver to fly uh, over people, potentially, you know, parachute systems are pretty much gonna be a must uh, from what some of the FAA personnel were talking about. And then also just recovery of your payload, your drone and payload system itself. As some of these systems become uh, more and more expensive, I mean, you could be putting you know, anywhere from thirty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars in the air. You'd you'd like to get it back, and it can address issues of uh, insurance rates too. So it's something that uh, is uh, to look at here in the very near future. But uh, Para Zero was one of the ones that we kind of thought was a hot item uh, there this year. Uh, they had some stuff from Intel too. Intel's been working on some technology with their RealSense technology, and they demonstrated that in a drone. They had this uh, Typhoon H uh, that uh, had this RealSense technology sensor, first generation. And um, what it would do is, instead of just being an obstacle avoidance sensor, uh, would actually remember the environment that it had flown past. So as it went past something, and say the drone was backing up or moving sideways, it would remember how far a wall was or a tree or you know an obstacle that was in the way, and it wouldn't move any further. So it actually kind of builds a bit of a memory of the environment that it operates in. So they're working on the next gen for that, and they're introducing that into their uh, their Falcon 8 Plus uh, drone for uh, survey type work, industrial inspection uh, and mapping type work that they're going to be uh, introducing. So you see companies like Intel even getting into the drone industry. Uh, NVIDIA uh, is another one that was there that had a really interesting um, presentation. You think NVIDIA, you're thinking, uh, you know, uh, gaming <clears throat> type systems for video cards and that's what NVIDIA does. Well. They're actually working on uh, and had demonstrated a system that is, uh, allows uh, a drone to actually follow uh, a trail, uh, completely autonomous, and look for a person at the end of the trail. And the drone didn't have any external input at all. The nearest operator was, uh, I think they said it was about two miles away, and the only person that was with the drone was actually the videographer that was doing the, uh, the video. So if you want to check that out from NVIDIA, but it, it's uh, basically you know, a self-awareness sensor. So it, it knows what its environment is, it knows how to make smart decisions to maneuver, and it can actually get into some pretty remote places. So these types of technologies are actually starting to come into their own, as well as some of the redundancy you're seeing in a lot of uh, uh, GPS systems, flight controllers, uh, that allow these systems to become much, much more safer than, uh, than previous generations have. So if we want to uh, kick over to uh, our uh, next video and we'll go into that, that'll be the, uh, um, let's go to the propeller, or let's see, let's do. So what we have with uh, uh, propeller is the uh, ability to um, simplify some of the drone uh, work you're actually going to get out and do uh, mapping or say you're doing aggregate um, uh, surveying and volumetrics in an area. Uh, you can actually uh, up quickly upload this information, um, make it shareable between a lot of different people, take tons of different measurements. You know, you would need to do a quick uh, smart volume, you know, hey, how big is that pile? You know, are we producing what we need for the next, the following week? Do I have enough on hand? Uh, you know, how much do we sell? 
and you can actually do some quick calculations from a lot of the software. So Propeller is one of those ones that's kind of on the leading edge on some of this work, and they're constantly updating uh, their software solutions. And they have simple tools that um, allow anybody with just a few minutes of uh, you know, practice or just a little bit of assistance able to figure this out. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a collaborative tool. So you're seeing drones that are actually uh, collecting information, but then also providing this collaborative output. Well, you know, the, the big question this year also was, you know, so what do I do with the data? Uh, drones collect a lot of data, and you, know, you have to put it in a usable format uh, so that people can use it, understand it, and make good decisions based on what they actually collected. It's not just pretty pictures and, uh, and video. So, you know, in that particular case, you know approximately how much materials would have to be removed. You could plan for that. You could actually have a bit of a plan to, uh, you know, uh, when am I going to move it? How many, you know, dump trucks? Who am I going to schedule to take care of this? Um, <clears throat> also, some of the uh, topographic models that are uh, available now have gotten a, a lot more accurate. So, pretty cool stuff. And we're, we're seeing a lot of software solutions uh, being made available to the end users, and that's going to be where the next battle is. So drones are, are one aspect of it, but where the um, software is handled, processed, managed, distributed, and then uh, what's, what's done with it. So, you know, software developers, you know, you still have an upper hand in this industry. Uh, if you want to get involved, there's, there's so much that uh, still needs to be done. And, uh, you know, we're seeing some of the packages like Intel was putting together that actually had a software solution, their drone, um, you know, just everything kind of merged together into one so that there was one one-stop shop for everything. And you do see some other companies kind of doing some of that same type of work. Yeah, so we're going to move on and uh, we're going to show you a new player in the uh, drone market and stuff, which is uh, uh, PowerVision with their PowerEye and... Uh, have their power ray and also the egg. So the power eye is basically a um, would be an on par competitor with the Inspire series with its micro four thirds camera system, and uh, you know, but a little bit different design where it's actually able to be folded. Um, the uh, lenses, it's micro four thirds, so you can inter interchangeable lenses that you can use. But one of the things that's a little bit different on this one too is uh, the portability factor. It's, this one actually folds up quite a bit and uh, is able to give you, you know, on par some of that same quality that folks have been used to with the, uh, you know, the Inspire series. So, you know, different companies looking at approaching uh, the problem, how to put these drones together, how to make them uh, portable, provide some of the sensors in long flight time and endurance, is, uh, it, you know, that fight, that battle that keeps taking place actually benefits the, uh, the consumer at the end of the day. They get to make the choice. So um, I just recommend you kind of check these guys out. They also, uh, like I said, you can put a variety of lenses on there since it's a micro four thirds camera. And uh, they also have a few other cameras that are uh, coming here in the near future for this. So, you know, you can check them out if you want. But uh, another cool design, uh, new on the market. And it's, uh, you know, kind of interesting to see some uh, their power egg design, which is another one that's kind of cool too. You can check that out. So we'll wrap this one up on the, uh, Power, yeah, power eye. Yeah, there we go. And then uh, on the um, <clears throat> so through the uh, days that we were there at Interdrone, like I said, there were a number of different conferences. Uh, some of the most interesting were the ones dealing with uh, you know fire rescue, search and rescue related. Uh, you know uh, how some of the um, public safety agencies are actually incorporating drones uh, into their workflow. And uh, believe it or not, these are becoming very much commonplace. Uh, they're aiding tremendously in search and rescue efforts throughout the country. Uh, they provide a low cost solution that allows uh, people to, uh, at various uh, small departments, to actually get out there, put something in the air, and uh, you know find maybe somebody who's lost, um, help in uh, establishing boundaries on a particular uh, fire or emergency, uh, FLIR camera systems, which have been very useful and have come into their own pretty much in the uh, in uh, different drones that are available. And uh, that commonplace and recurrence of use has actually uh, you know, created a, a new trust in, in a lot of communities. 
where they uh, see how useful that these have become. And, you know, we look at it too as if you save one life, um, it's, it's all worthwhile. So public policy you know, is coming along, um, acceptance is coming along, and the rules and regulations that the FAA has set forth, uh, you know, are a good cornerstone uh, for, for everyone to follow. And uh, we're starting to see um, people beginning to understand that, where the FAA is the regulator for UAS systems and that uh, we should default uh, to the guidelines that the FAA has been setting. And it's actually working out very, very well. And I think, uh, do we have one more video? Oh, that was, okay. Yeah, we're just doing the three this time. Um, <clears throat> so uh, agriculture, we got some things coming up. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more here about the uh, UAS summit that was held up in uh, Alaska. George Purdy and Ted Ralston were up there uh, for that particular week uh, up in Fairbanks, Alaska. And went, uh, George went straight from uh, Las Vegas to Alaska and back here to Hawaii. And uh, yeah, from blazing hot to freezing cold to just right. And um, the, uh, the reason that they were up there was talking with the regard to the uh, you know, Pan Pacific Test Range. Um, there were a number of lectures that were given with regard to the um, uh, test events that are taking place, not just at, in Alaska, but future test events that are going to you know, hopefully occur here uh, in Hawaii. But then also some of the other uh, test sites and what they've been doing and what uh, works, best practices, and what you're seeing uh, is to the, to the future of that. So, you know, in a future episode, we're going to have uh, probably uh, Ted and uh, George give a good overall summary of uh, some of the stuff that they were able to talk about while they were up there in, uh, in Alaska and in Fairbanks. And uh, we're going to head off to a short little break, and we'll come up and uh, recap for the day and look forward to seeing you guys out in the field. Aloha. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution How to make a brighter day What do we do? We've got to give a little love Have a little hope Make this world a little better So try a little more Harder than before Planning all week for the day of the big game Watching at home just doesn't feel the same Put on the list, it's who's gonna drive It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive Plan for fun and responsibility Choose the DT Captain of our team It's the DT For every game day, assign a designated driver Hey, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii, where the drone leads us. Mike Elliott filling in for Ted Ralston this week down here at Pioneer Plaza. Ted's off on another secret mission, and he'll be back next week. Um, just wanted to, like I said, wrap a little bit about tying what Interdrone was about. And, um, you know, it's an international drone conference. One of the things that was really amazing, uh, too, was uh, seeing a board that had a map of the world and they asked people to put their business cards you know all over and yeah there were a plenty from the United States but there were folks from around the world that were there and um, you know truly an international event another great event that they uh, had for Interdrone the third year in a row was their uh, women's luncheon that, that they had done women uh, you know, in drone luncheon that they had had and, um, you know, this is one of the areas that, uh, you know, working hard to see some change, hopefully see some change. This is a career opportunity, I think, uh, for folks that are coming up and, uh, you know, looking to a possible career. It's, it's not necessarily always about flying the drone. It's not necessarily about being, you know, camera operator or sensor operator. But, you know, the, the industry itself is actually looking for and needing a wide variety of people. And uh, I think the type of technology that, uh, and the discussions that were had during the Interdrome show you again and again how this is very much a gender-neutral uh, technology, a gender-neutral career field. 
uh, we need software programmers. We need folks doing apps. You know, we need, yeah, we need drone pilots. We need technicians that can fix and maintain these things. Um, there's a wide number of uh, fields that I think are available to just about anyone. You're also starting to see with some of the schools that were there, we talked to a few folks that, uh, you know, there are universities that have developed you know, entire drone curriculum. So somebody could come in as a freshman in college, uh, finish their four-year degree, do a grad school degree, and specialize maybe in uh, drone engineering and actually build and design, or software and app development uh, for a particular process maybe that is needed you know, for, uh, for a drone or doing particular research. University of Hawaii is working on that also, and they actually have folks out uh, doing research and using drones to capture data uh, on a recurrent basis. And because there are low-cost uh, means by which to co uh, sometimes collect complex data, uh, one of the things that we've uh, seen a lot of work being done here locally uh, that kind of translates is some of the uh, reef survey work that uh, in, in trying to address uh, overall coral reef health, and how is that affected by uh, global warming? Uh, you know, what are the stressors on the you know, coral reef systems? It's kind of hard to rent a helicopter or a plane and go fly over those coral reefs at low enough altitude to collect high resolution photos on a recurrent basis. But a drone is actually kind of the perfect platform for that type of research. So grad students are able to get out there and do some really critical research that may lead to uh, new mitigation measures to help protect you know, coral reefs uh, here in Hawaii. Um, some of the things that are coming out uh, with regard to um, uh, you know, test site operations on the island of Lanai, we're looking forward to uh, hopefully conducting a few operations in the near future and getting that up and running. Um, George Purdy has done an incredible job with the community there in getting just a tremendous amount of support and uh, securing what uh, is necessary for those, those initial operations. And um, after touring some of those areas out on Lanai with him, uh, just seeing what a, what a perfect area that is to actually uh, be able to operate. Some of the types of things that uh, the industry is looking for that, that uh, is in the very near future, there's a degree of autonomy in uh, drone operations. I talked to you earlier about the uh, NVIDIA software that basically was able to allow a drone to sense its environment and make smart decisions to go where it needed to go. Also beyond visual line of sight type technology. This is really where I think the immediate uh, drone industry is gonna go. But to be able to go beyond line of sight, a couple things have to happen. The drone has to obviously have uh, some degree of uh, intelligence as to its environment. It also needs to be aware of the airspace that it's in and air traffic, and it has to be able to take appropriate uh, uh, avoidance measures if necessary. So, you know, that type of testing and having a test site location where you can uh, set up different test criteria, practice those with different types of systems, see what works, see what doesn't, uh, and then tying that back into the university and some of the research that, uh, that folks are doing and, and bringing students along into this uh, and then having them graduate out into a potential career to fully develop this technology with some of the drone companies that are out there. It really looks, you know, to be, for us to be an amazing um, opportunity and we're looking forward to uh, uh, seeing some of those uh, action activities in the near future, and we'll definitely bring you some great stories from that once we uh, we have that kick off here. Hopefully, uh, maybe later this year, or early next year. We'll have to talk with George and Ted and see where some of that's going to be headed. Um, if at any time you have, um, have any questions for uh, myself, you can get in touch with us here at uh, Think Tech. We got the number on the screen: eight zero eight three seven four twenty fourteen. You can give us a call. Uh, normally have the Twitter feed up and stuff, and some folks are tweeting in also, but uh, if you want to have any quick call or any questions, be glad to help answer those. All right. Well, hey, uh, well, we'll just uh, once again wrap up. Thanks again for uh, letting me host here, Ted, today. Uh, just give you one of the quick wrap up for uh, Interdrone 2017. Hey, if you have any questions, you can uh, contact me at uh, our at our business at uh, Drone Services Hawaii. We'd be glad to help answer any of your questions. And uh, look forward to hosting again and being a guest here with Ted sometime, talking about uh, where the drone leads. Thank you very much, and aloha.